Hello everyone, Karen LeBlanc here at the Orlando Museum of Art for a solo exhibition by the artist known as Jeff Ray. Jeff Ray is known around the world for creating large-scale sculptures and public art installations that activate spaces and bring people together in shared humanity. Let's go inside and check it all out. Hi, Jeff Ray. Okay. Thanks for having me. First of all, congratulations on your first solo exhibit, and it's here at the Orlando Museum of Art, which I think is fitting because you're living here in the Central Florida region, famous all over, but living and working here as well. So tell me about the exhibit. What inspired it? So the exhibit really talks about my journey as an immigrant to a working professional to an artist. and. When I had the opportunity to do my first solo show, it wasn't really about necessarily objects that I would place in a room, but really creating a series of rooms that bring the user into my experience of what it means to be an immigrant, to have someone that goes through heart disease, to have someone that goes into public art and then goes into sort of his journey as a public artist to understand how art can influence culture socially, mentally, and, and physically. And this exhibit here is this, a 10,000 pounds of rice that is laid out in a, a series of 13 bands that represent the American flag, the stripes that you see in the U.S. flag. And the curvilin the curvili nature and the topography of the work is really representative of the idea of the journey across the ocean and that there is a journey that a lot of immigrants come from going across the ocean to come to this land of freedom. The little dot in the middle, it reflects sort of this idea of a reflecting sun. And then I have two portraits over here that are called sunrise and sunset that sort of show the sort of the sun as well that are in the middle of each of those portraits composed of the expired rice as well. How long did it take you to create this particular work? So this itself took me about two weeks just from the fact that I was actually here um, myself with a cup and a brush, wow. getting all these exact lines perfect as best as I can. And as you can see, the, that these bands of stripes are very geometric that then go into very organic nature as you sort of go into the piece itself. Now we're also listening to a soundscape. Uh, in fact, many of the installations in your solo exhibition are set to soundscapes. Tell me about that collaboration. So the soundscapes were actually created by Io, the producer. He's a Grammy award winning producer. Um, is actually right currently the number one producer on Billboard magazine. He works a lot with Cardi B and um, a lot of the other R&B artists and hip hop artists. And He's actually another great talent here in Central Florida. It was a great opportunity for him to kind of explore another medium um, that talks about the idea of sound and it, how it influences you. I love it. It's just a very multi-sensory experience. It's, it's a very immersive experience. Yes, yeah, sound, um, texture, um, and when you walk in here, everyone says you can smell it. Mm -hmm. Even Absolutely. though we have our masks on. But you can. <laughs> Absolutely, it's very appetizing actually. All right, so let's continue our journey, Jeffrey. Yes. Lead me to the next sure. installation. So every artist has this moment in their life when they get, become inspired. And my inspiration was actually a life incident which happened to me in 2008, which is I had a heart attack. And this poem describes the issues that I related to the, my heart attack. I had uh, a, several stents put into me and triple bypass surgery. And I've created a series of works in this room that talk about that experience. You can even hear it. The idea that you're actually in the hospital room. And what I've done is I've taken these mechanical devices that are inside of me called stents and made them into these sort of beautiful flowers that you see here that are inflated and put into your heart. I then took these stents themselves and put them in other medical devices such as an x-ray that you see over here and replaced a stigma that's in a flower with these beautiful stents and created these beautiful x-ray pieces here. And then did the same thing with a real flower in these beautiful porches that we see here that we photographed here. And it was a way for me to take this idea of a medical device that no one has seen before called a, st called a stent that you would see inside of you and bring it outside so you, everyone can see the beauty of it and the beauty within that's inside of me as well. So, um, so as we come into this next room, it's called um, sort of the garden room. And in the garden room, this is the first time where 
I'm able to sort of create a series of, of arts and sculpture that really about me and not necessarily about the cities I am working in currently. As a public artist, most of my work was trying to create um, site-specific work that was about the city and place. And this was an opportunity to create a signature piece. That is actually the inspiration between my work is really the city and cultures that I've actually, and the emotions that I've, I've learned and been part of in all these great cities that I've worked in. And I created these figural forms that are in different gestures that I've seen in other cities, which are relate to love, peace, joy, empowerment, respect, welcome. And we, do, we did these series of heads on them in the series what we call boxes, which box, B-A-K-S, is the phonetic spelling of the word B-O-X. These box head figures are replacements for building blocks or architectural buildings that are replaced the traditional head with, with a box that when you align all these figures and emotions together, create what I consider is a perfect city with all these different emotions that then create this beautiful skyline that you see here. So there's a 3D, very uh, geometric quality. Tell me about the system you're using here. So these are called um, uh, what I call low poly figurals. Um, it's a way that it's very fractal. And so it's a, it's a, it's a form that is sort of representative of when you t take your reflection into it, it sort of divides your figure in many different forms. But in terms of the execution, it's thousands of little pieces that are cut and welded together and then polished and polished to get to this mirror finish. People think it comes already chromed or not. It's not chromed, it's not painted, it's actually almost black steel when you first get it and then it's polished and polished to actually get it to that reflective finish. So as we talked about earlier, you saw these other positions that talk about other emotions I've seen in other cities, such as joy, love, passion, faith, and prayer. And now I have this new one here that is actually was created sp specifically this year that was done before the show that talks about issues of going on today with related to social unrest. Um, and it's a, part, it's a position that unlike I have in other things where I have a name for, this one doesn't have a name. Um, it's essentially almost called untitled, or what does it mean to take a knee? Because what we've seen lately is that other emotions are very predictable of what they mean, but this one has a lot of meaning to a lot of other people. And so I pushed this here in its own way, and I created this application where you could scan the QR code and be able to be part of the dialogue of messages back here that allow the visitor to input their thoughts of what does it mean to take a knee. Clearly, it, it stirs up emotions and reactions just by reading some of the comments protected on the wall. Yes, I mean, I, can't, I, mean, that's, I think that's the idea is to have a participation piece. Right. Uh, like a lot, of my, a lot of my work, it's really about getting people to be part of the process. And I think, you know, maybe this will never have a name, you know? Um, but I think it's one of the positions that are, it's very hard to define. My whole life experience is related to heart disease. And I wanted to kind of give an inside peek of sort of my daily routine to, to, ha to manage my heart disease. And for the last 10 years, I've been taking 12 pills a day, 12 pills a day, 365 days a year, times 10 years, and then collecting all my bottles for the last 10 years. Wow. to about 57,000 pills that then is executed down here in a graphic representation of the amount of pills I've taken in the last 10 years. You literally counted out these pills? 57,000 pills, yes. Wow. And then tell me about how you created this. What you did, freeform stack them? They're all stacked so that they're actually loose. <gasps> so. I can't wait to show you this next room. It's amazing. After you? Oh my goodness. This is st stunning. And it's scale. So this is um, another extension of my box series um, that you saw in the room of the silver giant pieces. 
This is a, in a topiary form, but this is called One Love, uh, made out of sheet moss and metal. And it has the two symbols of love back to back. One, which is commonly known, which is the two hands together creating the heart. And the other side, which is sort of the two fingers coming together, which is sort of the Asian version of love, which is the bottom of the heart when you go there. So when you see someone do that, that sort of means love as well. And it's an interactive piece because like the reflective pieces where you could see your reflection, I really wanted to be, have people be part of this at a larger scale. So if you can please be my volunteer. I will. Um, and step up to the kiosk um, and then wait for the countdown and then look up. So look up into the sensor and then look to the right and now you are part of the One Love piece. Wow. Oh my goodness. So the interesting thing about uh, this sculpture is that uh, pre-COVID, this was going to be intended where you wouldn't have your mask and the sensors would actually outline your eyes, your nose, and your mouth, and each side would have that distinct form of your face. Whereas because of COVID, now we only look into people's eyes. So it's really interesting that this is really a timepiece because we're all smiling internally, and we actually have to figure out how to smile through our eyes. So welcome to the final room in the exhibit. It's called Collective Consciousness. It's a series of 15 heads with 15 neon different languages around the world of experiences of people that I've met through my travels. And it also reminds you of being like in this international city or airport. So it's interesting because when I go into a city, I don't necessarily know the languages. So I use my phone to understand, use Google Translate. So for example, if you stepped under here with your phone, okay. if you go to your camera All right. and use the QR code, okay. this is in Korean. And what that does is you use your QR code and you hit the top. And then it tells you, I am respectful. So it will tell you exactly where you are. All right, so I see this remote in your hand. What well, does that sometimes do? I, as the artist, I also can create magic too. Ah. Green, green, <gasps> white. Wow. <laughs> ah, magic. <laughs> Jeffrey, thank you so much. But before I go, is there one overarching takeaway that you want visitors to leave having experienced this solo exhibition of your, your work? So the exhibit is called Points of Connection. The idea that we're all connected, the idea that we're all human, no matter what race, creed, religion, political background, political beliefs, we're still all human and we're all connected in some way. And I think that's what this exhibition is about. It's really a series of human of figures and emotions. It's really about things that people are thinking in their head. It's really about this idea of a journey and the sounds and smells that we hear together, that we're experiencing together. And I hope that the idea of points can the connection can actually make us all come closer together after seeing this exhibit. Well, thank you so much on taking me on your journey of points of connection and definitely it's a must-see sensory experience for art lovers, for anyone that wants to be engaged in humanity and really appreciate a thing of beauty that makes you think and makes you feel alive. Thanks, Karen.